how did you get into meditation? Like, how did that first come into your life? Sure, great question. Well, actually, in high school, I had a pretty tough time. I moved out when I was 15 years old and I was drinking a lot. I was drinking pretty heavily and also doing some drugs and just um, really trying to escape in whatever way that I knew how. And at that point in my life, I didn't know anything about meditation or breath work, or I surely didn't know what a sound bowl was, but I was brought up in a religious home. And my dad at the time um, was dealing with his own uh, battles with alcohol and drugs. And he was in and out of AA quite a bit. And one of my art teachers found out about it and kind of knew I was having a hard time. I was li living in my car quite a lot or at friends' houses. And I was coming to school just kind of a wreck all the time. And he suggested that I go to Al-Anon, which is the group for children or families of alcoholics. And in that class, they always did like a small prayer at the beginning. It's 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 widely Christian based um, organization. So it's a little bit religious. So like I kind of understood where the, they were coming from on some levels, but we took deep breaths at the beginning of every class. And that was really like the first time I thought about using breath or silence to slow down. Yeah. And then really like I never meditated until later on when um, I was living in New York and my boyfriend at the time was really into meditation and he, he kind of taught me how to meditate. Wow. Yeah. And that's how it came. And then, it, and then it just like was peppered in throughout my life until a moment in New York um, where I really hit rock bottom and I was still drinking a lot and also just like dealing with a pretty intense depression where I couldn't like leave my house for days at a time. And a dear friend who is actually a mutual friend of ours, Paul Kuhn, who is an incredible musician and sound meditation person, took me to a sound bath and I heard sound bowls for the first time. And I was just like blown away by the way my body just responded without me having to do anything. And it was the first time during meditation where I didn't almost feel scared to close my eyes and go inside. It was like the sound held me and made me feel safe enough to go in and be with that part of myself that like at the time I hated so much. Yeah. And so that, that like um, response to the sound was what inspired me to learn more about it. And then in, in a very quick matter of years, this is all like three years ago, I learned about sound and then it was like, that was it. That was my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about it. I think I've had, I've heard Nikki's voice at Medi Club and like tears have started pouring down my face. And like, there's a certain song, Goldberg Variations that I listen and like did the private with you and was like, what is happening? And I would want any, every single person in the world to be able to experience it because it is so powerful. Uh, and you do such an incredible job. Um, okay, what's our next question as I look at my phone? Um, what have you learned about teaching meditation in the corporate world? Um, do you feel that people are receptive to it? Yeah, you know, I think people are really receptive to it. And most of the time, what holds people back from engaging on it on their own or just trying it at all is that they think that they're going to be bad at it. <laughs> and um, especially for people who are adults who already have a life that they're living or, you know, like, are like high up in their field to try something new that is outside of your comfort zone. And I'll speak for myself, trying new things is fucking hard <laughs> and it's uncomfortable. And especially with something where you're not really quite sure how you're supposed to feel or if it's okay, if you're thinking, or if you feel like you need to fidget or open your eyes and we're such perfectionists, we want to do things so perfectly. But what I've learned is like, once you give people the permission to just be, to just sit and to say, you're not, you're not you're, you don't have to do it any kind of way like you're doing it right by just sitting with yourself yeah. um I've, I've just like learned that that permission slip is so powerful for anyone and especially for people whose job is to like kind of be on all the time yeah. it's pretty cool to see like them soften yeah. into into themselves really so you kind of lead with that yeah yeah they are so hard yeah. try to make it super um approachable for anybody but especially people who work these nine to five jobs who maybe have never experienced something like this or um i think that the wellness world in general can be really like hard to approach because it is a specific look with the you know a specific style and a specific way of talking about it and um 
I don't think it's necessary to come from that lens to be able to enjoy it. And I just, um, it's exciting to me to work with people who know nothing about it yeah. in that way. Yeah. And breathing is, is free, right? Yeah, it's free. We do, that, we do it every day. Um, let's say, well, you kind of answered that question, <laughs> but which was the next one. How do you like, in terms of quieting your mind when someone's meditating, I know that sometimes I'm like, <laughs> is there like, yeah, some, some ideas or wisdom as to how to get one to quiet your mind, I guess, maybe practice. Yeah. So two things that I love to do before I meditate are breath. We call it breath work, but that's just a big word for breathing. <laughs> um, just taking a few deep breaths just guiding yourself through a few deep breaths to ground into the moment, even before you shut your eyes, just to like give yourself a chance to settle into wherever you're sitting. And also really from, from the jump, the sound, having, having a point of focus, what we call in meditation, a point of focus, something to focus on. People use a mantra mm -hmm. um, or something that they repeat softly in their mind or the breath it can be a point of focus or sound. So in sound meditation, the point of focus becomes the tones or the resonant instruments that we play. And for me, I'm really drawn to the crystal singing bowls. So for a while I would put on tracks first, close my eyes, take a few deep breaths and then focus on the sound. And my only job was anytime a thought came up, it wasn't a bad thing. It was just a reminder to bring my attention back to the point of focus, which in that case was the sound. Yeah. So those are really great tools. And also just remembering that it's meditation isn't about having a fully clean mind. That's like, I mean, that that's great when it happens, but that's not what makes us do it, do it right. You know, it's just sitting with the thoughts and noticing them and letting them pass and then bringing your attention back to your breath and to your like essence and to your, to yourself. So it's kind of like, there's no wrong or right way of doing that's right. it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that's a really important takeaway for people. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm going to remember that. Um, let's see. Um, do you have any sort of quick meditations? You know, a lot of people are working from home. Um, uh, I've certainly brought in meditation into my daily practice much more than I used to. I think largely because I'm not like rushing out every single morning. Um, but yeah, in terms of like, you know, two counts in one count out, like, do you have something you'd like to share that's sort of very, uh, not beginners breathing, but yeah no i i one of my favorite breathing practices and one that we did at every stop on the last big quiet tour is mm -hmm. called boxed breathing mm -hmm. and it's called box breathing because it's a it's a four part breath and each part is the same so you breathe in for four hold for four exhale for four and then hold for four again and you can just do that three five times and it's pretty incredible and what's remarkable about these kind of practices is like you don't have to just be on a meditation cushion all perfect to do them. I do these sometimes when I'm walking between, well, when, when it wasn't quarantine, I was like walking from, you know, one meeting to another in town, or I was on the train and I felt myself starting to get like really wound up or I started to experience anxiety. I would use the box breath. I also do it before I go to bed to quiet my mind. It's really helpful. I like that a lot. Um, and I always finish uh, with this question, I feel like I could talk to you for 20 more hours, but uh, we're meant to keep these short. Um, what's for dinner? Jackie what's is for... amazing, creative. It's like she posts these videos and I'm always drooling. So I would imagine that you're cooking something delicious tonight. Oh my God. Well, I love that question. And before I came out here, I perfected pho, but with salmon, right. with crispy salmon on top so freaking bomb and it is my um sister's boyfriend's birthday i'm out in la visiting so we're gonna do pho for dinner tonight oh i'm so and jealous i don't know if i'm gonna have time i well i definitely won't have time to like make the proper broth but like if i was at home home i'd be making that broth girl i'd be getting them rice noodles all all the little things and i'm like really try to like do justice to the proper way or the proper way the traditional way of making these dishes but then of course I've never really seen salmon on a menu for that, but I'll tell you, it's a good mix. I like it. I'm inspired. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for joining us. Um, follow Jackie at, it's Jackie. Jackie Cantwell. 
I-T-S, Jackie Cantwell. And, and then I have a website now. I just did it myself. <laughs> it's just JackieCantwell.com. So all of this, all that good juicy stuff's on there too. Amazing. I can't wait to see it. Congratulations. 